Big news. Thank you. Seconds ago. Matt is the biggest threat for the American military lies in Washington, not on the battlefield. When General James Mattis returned to command as Secretary of Defense he discovered something that shocked him. The readiness for combat of the American military was not as he expected. In a series of congressional hearings last week, Mattis lifted the mist of our military's current ability to wage war effectively and he was certain what was the real cause, Congress. In his prepared testimony given to three different committees, Mattis declared that Congress caused more harm to the military than their enemies on the battlefield through inadequate funding and approval of budgets. Mattis said, I returned to the department, and I have been shocked by what I've seen about our readiness to fight. While nothing compared to the heartache caused by the loss of our troops during these, no enemy in the field has done more to harm combat readiness of our military than sequestration. The four-star general came forth arguing that America has no God-given right to victory on the battlefield. We in the Department of Defense are keenly aware of the sacrifices made by the American people to fund our military. Many times in the past we have looked reality in the eye, met challenges with congressional leadership, and built the most capable warfighting force in the world. There is no room for complacency and we have no God-given right to victory on the battlefield earn victory through commitment and sacrifice. And yet, for four years our military has been subject to or threatened by automatic, across-the-board cuts as a result of sequester, a mechanism meant to be so injurious to our military it would never go into effect. In addition, during nine of the past ten years, Congress has enacted 30 separate continuing resolutions to fund the Department of Defense, thus inhibiting our readiness and adaption to the new challenges. In the remarks, Mattis noted the forthcoming challenges with terror groups, Russia, Iran and particularly the threat from North Korea. Yet Mattis reserved his harshest language for America's legislative body, routinely impressing upon the committee that it holds the key to defeating these global foes. Mattis punctuated his remarks by saying the Armed Forces Committee has put the American servicemen at greater risk through its budget hesitation. Mattis said, in the past, by falling to pass a budget on time or eliminate the threat of sequestration, Congress sidelined itself from its active constitutional oversight role. It has blocked new programs, prevented service growth, stalled industry initiative and placed troops at greater risk. According to Politico, Trump has proposed military budget increases, but the increases are not enough for some. President Donald Trump's proposed fiscal 2018 budget requests $603 billion in national defense spending, including the Pentagon's base budget as well as national security programs under the Energy Department. Republican defense hawks, however, have called the request insufficient to rebuild the military, nothing the president's proposal is only 3 percent higher than projected by the Obama administration. Instead, they've called for $640 billion. All those proposals, though, are far above the $549 billion permitted by the Budget Control Act. The battle over the budget will be an exhaustive battle Congress will take up later in the year. What are your thoughts on this? Comment section below. Unthinkable. Matt Damon demands mask on confiscation in America. Know very well for the actions he had been filming on the big screen, Matt is certain on one thing. He was vividly clear about how he feels for the Second Amendment. The Daily Caller reported that Damon not so long ago used a press conference to call for the U.S. to follow the example of Australia, and that's the government to confiscate guns. He said on the promotion of Jason Bourne in Sydney, You guys did it here in one hell swoop, in 1996 and I wish that could happen here in my country, but it's such personal issue for people that we cannot talk about it sensibly. People get so emotional that even when you make a suggestion about not selling AK-47 to people on terror watch lists, that's a non-starter. I don't know what needs to happen. Obviously mass shootings aren't going to do it. There have been so many of them at this point. Sandy Hook, when those children were murdered, if that didn't do it, you know. I just don't know. Maybe we just need to evolve further before we can have that conversation, I don't know. It's wonderful what Australia did because you guys haven't had a mass shooting since you went, no, 
we're going to be sensible about this. And nobody's rights have been infringed, you guys are fine. I wish we could be sensible like that but I don't think that's going to happen in my lifetime. Oh the irony. Damon is shooting everyone in the movies, despite his call for gun confiscation. What are your thoughts on this? Comment section below. Miley Cyrus openly criticizes Melania Trump. Instantly gets blasted. Liberal celebrity Miley Cyrus criticized Dolce & Gabbana for supporting First Lady Melania Trump. It didn't take long for this to come back to bite Cyrus in a big way. Fox News reported that Cyrus took to Instagram to thank Dolce and Gabbana for inviting her younger brother to walk in their Milan fashion show. However, Cyrus then proceeded to bash Dolce and Gabbana for their politics, even though they said they are not boycotting Melania specifically so that they can stay out of politics. I strongly disagree with your politics. Cyrus wrote before adding but I do support your company's effort to celebrate young artists and give them the platform to shine their light for all to see. This came back to bite Cyrus when Stefano Gabbana fired back at her on his own Instagram page. We are Italian and we don't care about politics, or, American, politics, he wrote in Italian. We make dresses and if you think about doing politics with a post it's simply ignorant. We don't need your posts or comments so next time please ignore us. Hash boycott Dossi Gabbana, what do you think of this? Share your IT's happening. Watch what happened after MSNBC host made accusations on Newt Gingrich's wife. MSNBC's Morning Joe just will not stop personally attacking President Trump every day. But during the last weekend, they cross the line as they have attacked Newt Gingrich, Donald Trump's good friend. Joe Skoberg, the host of the show stated that the only reason for Newt to be defending President Trump is the fact that his wife is appointed for an ambassadorship. Even though Newt Gingrich and Calista Gingrich, his wife, have been standing by Trump for a long period of time, Joe is still attacking him. So it makes no sense to say that Newt is doing this just because his wife was appointed for a position. Newt pointed out that if Joe Scarborough thinks that he and his wife are just selling themselves out for positions, then Joe is revealing himself to be a prostitute and a sellout. Joe threw these sick insults at the former Speaker of the House and his wife, and now Newt has responded. From Mediate, though he initially praised Mueller, Gingrich has recently been promoting the idea that the former FBI director cannot be fair and impartial in his investigation. Gingrich has championed this notion while basing IT on hostility towards Trump from the political left. On Thursday, Gingrich released a series of tweets where he slammed Mueller over the reports that Trump is facing an investigation for obstruction of justice. Gingrich called IT a sign that Mueller is a member of the deep state determined to thwart and destroy Trump's momentum. We would be happy to hear your thoughts and predictions. Game Changer Donald Trump Decision Makes Al Sharpton Go After Him Al Sharpton continues to make news in his usual unpleasant way. He's issuing controversial statements that he even doesn't have a single clue what they are related to. His activist approach and seeking to make a living out of it of about anything has given him the aura of a community con man compared to Barack Obama's community organizer. Both of them are basically professional rabble rousers and troublemakers for fun and profit. His latest approach is in accusing Ivka Trump, of being a national security risk, because of her potential appointment to a position as an advisor to her father, meaning her own office in the White House and access to classified documents. From right-wing news, Sharpton railed against Ivka being given a position in her father's administration, and compared her to Barack Obama's daughters. If President Barack Obama had given his daughters or his mother-in-law an office and some access to classified documents and cleared security status, they would have run him and everybody else out, of, the White House, Sharpton argued. He was referring to Sasha and Malia Obama, and Marion Robinson, mother of Michelle Obama, who lived in the White House with the Obama family. Sharpton didn't accent however, the fact that Heimka will not be receiving a salary. He said, 
giving a office on the west wing of I get Trump, somebody explain to me how you can give security clearance, access to classified material, and a office to somebody that don't have a title or job? They say now she ain't got no title. She ain't got no role. We ain't paying her no money. But she can see everything classified. Sharpton is far from the only critic of Trump's decision to give Ibga an office in the West Wing with access to classified information. Social media lit up with complaints after the news broke. However, despite the complaints, Ibga's lawyer says that the ethics of the situation have been resolved. Jamie Gorlick announced that the Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel agreed that the president can consult with family members as private citizens, and that this is what Trump plans to do with Ivanka. Gorlick said, Our view is that the conservative approach is for Ivanka to voluntarily comply with the rules that would apply if she were a government employee, even though she is not. The White House Counsel's Office agrees with that approach. The whole thing just sounds end of the world for the anti Trump believers. In the words of Senator Ted Cruz, it is a nothing burger. What are your thoughts on this? Comment section below.